Moving on with our particle system, the next thing I want to do is make our particle spin a bit. So I'm going to right click and come down to rotation rate, which means animated rotation, and we'll choose our initial rotate rate module. Now by default, this causes our particles to all spin clockwise, which looks a little bit funny. So let's select the initial rotate rate, expand start rotation rate, and the distribution is a float uniform with a min and a max, so let's set min to negative one. And now the particles can spin either way they like. And already the result is starting to look a lot more like flame. Now next, I want to change the point in space from which these particles are spawned. Currently they are all spawned from the exact same location, and it does look a little bit funny. The fire will look a bit more natural if we can spread that out. So what I'm going to do is right click, come down to location, and choose a cylinder module. Now if we select this, and take a look in all of its properties. There are a lot of settings to control the uh, the look of this cylinder and how it's placed, but if we scroll down, at the very bottom you'll see Cascade 3D Draw Mode. Go ahead and switch this on and you can visualize the cylinder itself and you can kind of see how this works. The particles are all being born from random locations inside the cylinder, but we're going to simplify this down a little bit. Let's take the start radius. Currently this is set to a float constant of 50 Let's pull that down to 5, so it'll be a lot smaller. And it's a little bit on the tall side, so let's come down to Start Height. And we're going to pull that down to 5 as well. So now our particles are, have a little bit of variation in the point at which they're born, which causes a little bit more of a flickering effect. When you're done, go ahead and switch off 3D Draw Mode for the cylinder so it's not a distraction. Okay, so next we're going to work on the size of our particles. And we're going to change the particle size throughout their lifespans. Basically, we're going to make the particles get smaller over time. Actually, technically, we're going to make them start off small and then get bigger and then get smaller again, if you really want to be technical. So let's right-click. We're going to come down to Size and choose Size by Life. This allows us to change the size of the particles across their lifespan using a curve. So we'll select that take a look at the life multiplier property and you'll see this already has a distribution vector constant curve now if we expand this we have two curve points by default 0 and 1 and if we expand this let's just expand our first point you'll see we have an in value of 0 but the out value actually has to be expanded and that's because out value has numbers for x y and z however when we first set up our emitter you might recall that we had set our required module to have a screen alignment of PSA square. This means that our particles will always be square in shape. What that translates to is that when scaling our particles, we only have to change the X value and Y and Z will update accordingly. And technically we're not even using Z because these are just uh, two dimensional sprites. If we were creating a mesh emitter that was emitting little static meshes, uh, then we could use X and Y and Z independently. Okay, so let's jump down here to our settings. For point zero, we're going to leave the in value at zero. We're going to set the out value to zero as well. So now we have these tiny little particles that get bigger across their lifespan. Now let's close that up and jump down to point one. For the next in value, we're going to go to point two, which is 20% of the particle's total lifespan. And we're going to set the out value to 1.25, so 125%. So now you can see those particles growing over that first 25%. Now I'm going to add one more point. So up here in my points, I'll click plus, which will break my particle system for a moment because by default, your in value is set to zero, which is the birth of the particle, and your out value is set to zero as well. So we're kind of overriding that first point. So let's take the in value and set it to one. The out value by default is zero, which will work fine. That just means our, our flames are going to billow outward and then they're going to get smaller as they go up. So that takes care of our size over the life of the particles. The only thing is that if we take a look at this curve, if we send it over to the curve editor, and let's go ahead and I'm going to remove some of the uh, other objects from our curve editor. We can just uh, switch these off actually. Now let's view uh, everybody. So I'm just going to click view all. And in this case, we actually do kind of see that really harsh change in direction from the linear interpolation. So I'm going to fix that 
by coming over here to our X curve, you see how it kind of jaggedly goes up and then back down. We'll select that first point down here inside the curve editor. I'll try to center it up to make it easier to see. And we'll go ahead and give this a tangent type of auto clamped. And I'll come up to the second point and do the same. So now that smooths things out, and you no longer see that kind of pointy billow, because it was getting kind of obvious that your particles were getting large and then immediately getting down with kind of a jerky style motion. So that fixes that problem. Now with that, our flame emitter, as simple as it is, is essentially done. So I'm going to go ahead and save my package. Let's go ahead and close out of Cascade. We'll select the particle demo and hit Control S, and that will wrap things up for this video. Thanks a lot. Thank <laughs> you.